My name is Ali Gasli. I'm going to present to you part two of the chapter about magnetic circuits. In this part, I will present the magnetization curve, which shows a graphical representation of pH relation. Then we'll see how we can find the equivalent circuit of a magnetic circuit with an air gap. Finally, we'll define the inductance of a magnetic circuit. Before I start going through the slides, I would like to start by showing to you a short educational movie that is on YouTube, which presents some magnetic material properties and the relation between the magnetic field and its flux density. Ferromagnetic materials, such as iron, are composed of microscopic regions called magnetic domains. These magnetic domains act like tiny permanent magnets that can change their direction of magnetization. We now see the microscopic structure of a new and magnetized ferromagnetic material. Inside such materials there are many magnetic domains with their magnetization axes pointing in random direction. The resultant magnetic field of this slab of iron is zero. When we apply a small magnetic field to this slab, what happens is that the domains begin to move, and the domains which have a favorable direction of easy magnetization grow larger. This growth is reversible as long as the field stays very small. If we turn the field off, the magnetization will return to zero. Eventually, for high enough fields, when we have moved all the domain walls and magnetized each crystal in its best direction, there are still some domains which happen to have their easy directions of magnetization not in the direction of our external magnetic field. It takes a lot of extra field to turn those magnetic moments around. So the magnetization increases slowly, but smoothly, for high fields. Saturation occurs when practically all the domains are lined up, so further increase in magnetic field intensity cannot cause further alignment of the domains. So if you consider a toroid circuit and increase its magnetic field intensity by increasing the current in the coil, then the flux density in the core changes in the way shown in this figure. Notice that the flux density B increases almost linearly in the region of low values of the magnetic field intensity H. However, at high values of H, the change of B is nonlinear and the magnetic material shows the effect of saturation. The BH curve is also called the magnetization curve. So the magnetic circuit differs from the electric circuit in this respect. Resistance is normally independent of current in an electric circuit, whereas reluctance depends on the flux density in the magnetic circuit. So the reluctance of the magnetic path is dependent on the flux density. It is low when B is low and high when B is high. This figure shows the BH characteristics of three different types of magnetic cores, cast iron, cast steel, and silicon sheet steels. Note that to establish a certain level of flux density B in the various magnetic materials, the values of magnetic flux intensity and thus the electric current required are different for the three different materials. It is clearly noticed that the current required is much higher for cast iron case than for cast steel or silicon sheet steel cases. Now we return back to the magnetic equivalent circuit, but we will consider cases of magnetic structures with different materials. A magnetic circuit having two or more media is known as a composite structure. For instance, in rotating electrical machines, the rotor is physically isolated from the stator by the air gap. Practically, the same flux is present in the poles made of magnetic core and the air gap. However, to maintain the same flux density, the air gap will require much more MMF than the magnetic core. If the flux density is high, then in this case, the core portion of the magnetic circuit may exhibit a saturation effect. However, the air gap remains unsaturated since the BH curve of the air medium is linear because mu is equal to zero 
which is constant. To simplify the analysis, a magnetic equivalent circuit can be derived for composite structures. Let us consider the following simple composite structure and find its equivalent electric circuit. The driving force in this magnetic circuit is the MMF F, which is equal to an I. And the core medium and the air gap medium can be represented by their corresponding reluctances, RC and RG respectively. Since the same flux flows in the core and the air gap, the two reluctances can be considered connected in series. Therefore, the magnetic flux is determined as the ratio of the MMF over the sum of reluctances which are considered in series. Remember that the flux is the same in both the magnetic core and the air gap. The total MMF is the sum of all currents and according to Ampere's law, it is the integration of the magnetic flux intensity over the contour LC plus LG. The MMF in the core is HC multiplied by LC and the MMF in the air gap is HG multiplied by LG and the total MMF is the sum of both the core and air gap MMFs. The magnetic flux density BC in the magnetic core is determined by this equation where AC is the core cross section area. And the magnetic flux density BG in the air gap is determined by the, this equation where AG is the air gap cross section area. Thus, the equivalent circuit of the composite structure can be derived as shown here. So if different mediums are sharing the same flux, their reluctances will be connected in series in the given circuit. Let's zoom into the air gap and see what's really happening there. In the air gap, the magnetic flux lines bludge outward somewhat. This is known as fringing of the flux. The effect of this flux fringing is to increase the cross-sectional area of the air gap. However, for small air gaps, this fringing effect can be neglected. Now, if this fringing effect is neglected, the cross-sectional areas of the core and the air gap are the same. And therefore, the flux densities in the core and the air gap are equal. Now, let's practice a bit more on deriving the equivalent magnetic circuit using the right-hand rule and Ampere's law. Whenever we have a coil with a current flowing into it, it is important to start by looking at the direction of this current. For instance, if the current direction in a coil is as shown in this figure, then according to the right-hand rule, the magnetic flux intensity will be in the direction from bottom to up as shown in this figure. The MMF F along the contour L from point X1 to point X2 is as shown in this figure. Since the magnetic field intensity flows from point X1 to point X2 in the contour, then X1 will be considered the positive pole and X2 is the negative pole. Thus, we can write the equivalent circuit as shown in this figure. These same steps and procedure are followed whenever we have a coil in the magnetic circuit. If we have more than one coil, then we should have more than one MMF in the equivalent circuit. Now I let you practice on few simple examples. I suggest that you pause the movie now and spend some time thinking about the answers before you get the right answer in the next slide. Here is the correct answer.
Now pause the movie again and think about the example before you see the answer. Here is the correct answer. Now pause the movie again and think about the example before you see the answer. Here is the correct answer. Now pause the movie again and think about the example before you see the answer. Here is the correct answer. Now let us move forward and study another important parameter in the magnetic circuit, which is the inductance. A coil wound on a magnetic core, such as the one shown here, is frequently used in electric circuits. This coil may be represented by an ideal electric circuit element, call it inductance, which is defined as the flux linkage of the coil per amperes of its current. We will elaborate more on this in next slide. We define the flux linkage of a given n turns coil as the product of the magnetic flux by the number of turns in the coil. The inductance is therefore defined as the ratio of the flux linkage over the current in the coil. Its unit is Henry. Now, using these two equations and the equation of the flux and flux density, we can write the expression of the inductance as shown in this equation. Note that the last term in this equation is obtained by considering Ampere's law. Therefore, the equation of the equivalent inductance L of an N-turns coil wound around a magnetic core of cross-section A and permeability mu can be expressed as shown by this equation. Notice that the inductance of a coil in a magnetic circuit is a function of the number of turns n and the magnetic circuit reluctance r. This inductance is proportional to the square of the number of turns n and inverse proportional to the reluctance r. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching.